Because when you go from this circle to the above circle, you are changing with the theta. Because zenith angle is changing. Phi is only changing on this line, on this circle. Another circle above this one, theta will change for that. So, as you to be symmetric, I will say m is equal to 0, and then I can write that d over dx 1 minus x square dp over dx and plus l into l plus 1 p will be equal to 0. And now you are having the solution or you can say the shape of the equation very easy because x is cos theta only theta dependent yeah. p is only depending on theta and n is depending on theta but r is not right inside n we are having the dependence of r as well but it's just a constant and for the moment we are treating it as a constant and it is just a number and p is depending on theta so we have split it our this equation into theta dependent only this equation this equation we call associated Legender equation. Associated means that n is associated with it. M is an additional parameter which is dependent on pi. Associated legender equation and this equation we call the legender equation. This is the legender equation and now we will solve this one. I know the limits of theta. The limits of theta are in spherical polar coordinates from 0 to 5. But I have converted this theta into cos theta and for cos theta I have written x. x is equal to cos theta. So cos of 0 is equal to 1 and cos of pi is equal to minus 1. So the limits of my x are actually from minus 1 to plus 1. Okay. And now we will start with solving this equation. So we wrote our equation, the legitimate equation and it was 1 minus x square d by dx okay. this was d by dx and 1 minus x square dp over dx plus l and l plus 1 and p equals 0 this was the regenerative equation and now if I apply on this this d by dx then first function and the derivative of the second function will become d by d square d by dx square then minus the derivative of this and it will be 2x and the second function will come with it dp by dx plus l into l plus 1 and p equal to 0. And now I convert this one into this form 1 minus x square this is p double prime minus 2x this is p prime plus l into l plus 1 and this is p which is equal to 0. And now again I will start with the power series law or power series and we will write the solution of this with the help of the power series 
let's say I write the for series is P a function of x and this is equal to x to the power alpha and summation on k running from 0 to infinity and a k x power k. This is the typical form of the power series that we write series from 0 to infinity terms and a k is the coefficient of it and x k is the variable k being the power of it. So it will be a0 x0 so it will be a0 plus a1 x a2 x squared a3 x cubed and so on. And this x power alpha we are writing it additional with this and I can merge this one with it and it will be p of x is equal summation on k. Now I am not writing k running from 0 to infinity because it is understood and a k x to the power k plus alpha or alpha plus k. So now I will write what about p prime of x. Now when you apply derivative with respect to x then you will get a k is a constant and then this will become k plus alpha and x to the power k plus alpha minus 1 n x n minus 1 and similarly means there will be a summation on k as well this is to be written there and then I can write the, the double derivative of this one p double prime of x and this is equal summation on k a k and then it will be applied on this so this multiplied with this and it will be k plus alpha and k plus alpha minus 1 and x to the power k plus alpha minus 2 minus 1 minus 1 and it will become minus 2 now putting these for p p prime and p double prime in this equation so what we will get we will get a very long equation now and i will write this one is 1 minus x square is there and then for p double prime i will have to write this way so it is summation on k and a k k plus alpha k plus alpha minus 1 x to the power k plus alpha minus 2 this is for p double prime and then minus 2 x and for p prime i will write summation on k a k and k plus alpha k plus alpha and x to the power k plus alpha minus 1 and then plus n into n plus 1 and summation on k and p for p i will have to write this way and this is a k x to the power k plus alpha and this is equal to zero right i have written means i have put these values in this equation and nothing else i can now take something is common here 
you know summation on k in a k with this summation of k k summation on k in a k. So I will move it out and then I will write this coefficient and then I will write this one and then the coefficient this one and this x power the coefficient and the x power. So I can write the summation on this one summation on k okay you know one thing you know one thing that you can do further simplification so it will make our calculation easier when I will take this one as common you will have 1 minus x square with this so the coefficient is here but here it is 1 minus x square so 1 will be multiplied with all this and x power 2 now you see here here is x power minus 2 so these two will cancel when it comes here here is x minus 1 and there is x power 2 so it will become plus 1 right Yes, and so on. So I can write this thing simply is I'll let me get two more steps. So I can write summation on k and a k. This one is common and then k plus alpha, which is this term, and k plus alpha minus 1 the next term and this will be x to the power k plus alpha minus 2 because 1 it will be multiplied with this one and then with x square so the next will be with x square and it will be plus k plus alpha and k plus alpha minus 1 and x to the power k plus alpha while minus 2 will just cancel with this 2 and you will have only x k plus alpha so this one term this one term is now multiplied with this so it became two terms here one with this one and the other with this one and then minus 2 and here I can write the coefficients first because I have taken a k and summation is common so minus 2 and then this x will be multiplied with this when this x will multiply with this is x power 1 and here x power minus 1 so it will become 2k plus alpha minus 2 and k plus alpha and x to the power k plus alpha and plus n into n plus 1 and x to the power k plus alpha and squared bracket here is equal to zero. Clear? So we have just simplified the x powers with their counterparts. And now I can take you see here that why? Yes. Where? This second term? Yes, This one? Okay. Why? Minus. Minus. Yes, it will be minus. It will be minus. So, I think, yes, I'm having right there. This is minus. Okay. Now, I will have to further simplify this one. So, I can write that 
this is summation on, or let me write it from here, bit summation on k and a k, a k, k plus alpha and k plus alpha minus 1 and x to the power k plus alpha minus 2 means I have split it this one with this and plus summation on k and a k I take is common and minus it will be minus k plus alpha so minus k plus alpha and k plus alpha minus 1 minus 2 k plus alpha and k plus alpha and plus plus L and L plus 1 and then I can write with this x k plus alpha equals to 0. So what I did, I just split it this one and then this term I wrote combined with it. And x k plus alpha was common here, common here, common here and I took it out from there. Here was not this one, means here was minus 2 as well. That's why I separated this from all this, right? So, uh, 